Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them out of bite-sized pieces. So today the market is exploding. I want to take a look at a couple of different projects and why they are going up so high in value. And the first thing I want to take a look at is Binance Coin. And really it comes down to this blog post which talks about cheat codes, but it really comes down to Metcalf's Law and utility and what is going behind the scenes with this new little project called Binance Pay, which is going to compete with PayPal. Also, Jim Cramer from Mad Money is saying he owns Bitcoin. And the reason that he owns Bitcoin is not surprising to us, but it's gonna be surprising to a lot of people. So we'll take a look at that secondly. And then last, we're gonna talk about, can you buy a Tesla car with Bitcoin? Well, you can't do it right now, but pretty soon you're all gonna be able to. But the real question is, what's it gonna do for taxes? So we'll take a look at those three things. But first, let me talk about the video that we had done yesterday. And this was, I think this was a pretty fun one for us or for me, just to talk about what is going on in Africa and uh, how did, how there's so many unbanked and all the different things that are going on. And as far as like Cardano coming in and getting these government, this massive government contract, and it looks like they're gonna start to onboard a hundred million users. But uh, the question I had, because I took a look at just data that was available on, on Google, but I wanted to get uh, the opinion of somebody who was there or who lives there, or who deals with it. I reached out to uh, Ray Youssef uh, from Paxful and he couldn't make it and a couple of the people and they couldn't make it, but no big deal. So uh, there was uh, a DM that I put out. I said, hey, or a message on Twitter. I said, hey, if you have any information on uh, the banking situation in Africa, I'd love to hear about it. So uh, this is from Joe. He says, hey, Dan, watch your videos for a while. Appreciate them a ton. I've been working for a credit bureau, which does business mainly in third world countries. Feel free if you want to talk about the topic of bank in Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, whatever. So great. I go, what I want to know is the things that I was talking about yesterday, were they correct in my assessment for, you know, how many people were actually unbanked, the M-Pesa, and what do you think about blockchain actually moving in? Uh, he says, uh, it's really hard to, to answer in general. You're right that there is a huge potential for blockchain application, as it is uh, in general for the ledger technology. But the tech was always there, blockchain or not. The problem with Africa is that nobody solves its problems unless there's a big piece of pie in it. Sometimes it is more profitable not to solve Africa's issues. In short, Cardano might get some PR, consulting contract, and the government will run some nodes, but I'm a bit skeptic as any further development. Africans love to promise everything, but then nothing happens. I think my ID by ICX is a similar concept, brought nothing except PR. So. That is uh, that is the truth, and that is what we have right now. I've actually reached out to a couple more people to see what's going on, but I don't just want to have this channel just to have to be just some huge hype piece where you know, like this is going to happen, and this is going to go to the moon, and you know, you should really get into it. You have to know both sides of the story just to make a really well-informed decision. So uh, I will reach out and get some more people. However, to me, it does look very bullish about what is going on, but uh, in the end, it really just depends on uh, how everything executes and everything falls into place. And uh, someone made a comment on my, on my Twitter feed. They said, hey, wasn't Tron supposed to take over the world? And then, you know, now here we are. So I don't know if that's uh, really, <laughs> that's really what actually happened. I don't think Tron is really taking up too much. So that is what's going on. Let's take a look at what is going on with the market right now. So today it is, God, what is it? February 9th, uh, 1 p.m. El Paso, Texas time. As you can tell, it's a very nice day here. It's gonna be 74 degrees. Uh, I'm bragging about it today because tomorrow it's gonna go down like the 60s and the next day it's gonna be like in the 40s. So it's not like it's great here all the time. And just remember, it's like 110 here in the summer. So it is what it is. Anyhow, so Bitcoin right now, we are looking at uh, 47,000. After that news yesterday, and then we talked about, you know, Elon Musk coming in and saying they're gonna buy, or they've already bought $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin uh, back in uh, late January. So the price, uh, you know, we were almost at, uh, I think we we're at 48.6 at one point, but we're still doing good, 47,000. So, um, you know, a little pullback. Maybe we'll see some more, but who knows? Uh, Ethereum, you know, the futures uh, just launched with the CME. I thought it would uh, do some damage, but it looks like everything's doing okay. I don't know if it's, it coincides with with the Elon Musk announcement, because, you know, when Elon Musk comes in and says, hey, you know, this is we're, we're going to buy a bunch of Bitcoin, it seems to buoy the whole situation. So I really can't make an assessment. But, you know, uh, Ethereum did hit, hit 1800, so that's great. Tether's Tether. Uh, Cardano is uh, making that massive explosion, but there was a bit of a pullback, and now we're at, uh, that's not too bad, 69 cents. XRP's still there. Polkadot and XRP have been bouncing back and forth. But the real story, and then we'll go on to the main story, is Binance Coin. Uh, I took a look at this, 
And I said, man, 43%, 70%. I mean, it's just going crazy. So, I mean, that is pretty fantastic numbers. Um, when Binance first came out, I will just say this, and I talked about this uh, yesterday, actually, uh, in another, another video. And uh, I just didn't understand Binance at the point. I'm like, who cares? What does it really do? Uh, now that uh, I've learned a little bit more and people have uh, you know, told me this is what's going on and I've done more of my research, I can tell you that uh, Binance Coin is going to be uh, enormous, especially what we're going to talk about today. And really it comes down to you know, utility and Metcalf's Law. So let's just take a look at what I'm talking about. So this comes down to this little piece right here. There's a blog post from yesterday. And it's pretty funny. And if you're a kid of the 80s, 90s maybe, not nah, mostly 80s, you will recognize this code right here. And uh, it's pretty funny the, this is the way they did that. But the whole thing was about what makes Binance Coin pop? What's going on? So it kind of meshes together a bunch of different things, but it goes over 16 pieces. But it talks about, look, if you have Binance Coin, you can save on fees, right? So the more Binance Coin you have, uh, the more fees you have. For spot, save 25%, they have futures and they have margin. So futures is 10%, margin is 5%. percent not getting into that, that's not my forte. I'll tell you what I know, I'll tell you what I don't know. I don't do that stuff. So there is that part. And then it says, save, save on fees when you increase your VIP level. Again, uh, the more BNB you have, the more savings you have. So why wouldn't people buy it up, right? So Binance offers 10 different VIP levels, calculated based on your 30 day trading volume and average BNB balance over the same period. And you will see, um, Celsius do the same type of thing, right? There are different levels. So the more Celsius tokens that you have, the more that you get back in your yield. So that's why Celsius token goes up. Again, the more utility you have, uh, the more of a network effect, the more of uh, Metcalf's law, the more connections you have, the more users you have, the more that token will go up. Only makes sense. And then we say, uh, save on fees for launch transaction yeah, for OTC. Okay. Get fees entirely with Binance peer-to-peer. -peer. Now this one was pretty cool. And this is why <laughs> this is why Americans get the shaft because of stuff like this. So if you haven't seen this, this is pretty awesome. I'm just going to open this up, the peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. Oops, that's not it. Right here. Peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. Let me close this up even more. So this right here, you are essentially going right direction, right directionally to the person who is selling these cryptocurrencies. And you can take a look here, like I just put it to BNB, right? And this is somebody who's, they're gonna take payment in PayPal or uh, Revolut Bank, which I used to have, I don't like them, but uh, whatever. Uh, PayPal, S, I don't know what that is. And some different types of um, alternative banks. And you can lay out what you wanna do. You can look for uh, Bitcoin, again, peer to peer. You can look for ETH, DAI, whatever else. And there's certain parameters, like here for the all payments, you can put it down. There's all these different types of banks, Apple Pay, Banco, Banco Estado, Banco de Chile. Man, this is pretty awesome. So uh, again, you have to be, you have to have a Binance account to have this peer-to-peer, -peer, but let's just talk about it real quick. I mean, how awesome is that, right? You could, you could go in there, you can have a Binance account and go like, look, I have dollars and I have a bank account, uh, so let me get some BNB, let me get some Bitcoin. Now the thing, the big question probably is, is how much do they track with that? I'm not for sure, because I don't have an account, I can't check it out, but how great would that be if you can just buy a Bitcoin with some cash from the bank and then that's it, capital gains tax out the window. I'm not telling you what to do, not a financial advice, I'm just saying this is just one of those interesting things that Binance is doing. And uh, I don't have access to that because uh, I am uh, American and that's just how it goes. We kind of get the shaft and these, these cool things because of regulation. And uh, the ones that get the biggest shaft, of course, is New Yorkers. Sorry, guys. Anyhow, on top of that, flexible savings, earn interest and rewards on your crypto assets. Uh, there's no fees, APY, up to 15%. Now we've seen APY and yield uh, everywhere across the board. You see it on Voyager, you see it on Celsius. But the more types of opportunities you can string together in an exchange that ties in with the with the um, actual token of the exchange, in this case, Binance Coin, the better off you're going to be. I mean, this is amazing. So they have that. There's this thing called Launch Pool, where you can, let me just highlight this, use your existing crypto assets to earn new tokens listed on Binance.coin. So you are staking or you have your, your cryptocurrency on Binance. They are rewarding you in these new tokens that are coming on, and you can just gain more. So I mean, like to me, Whoops, let me go back. 
it sounds to me like you are getting just an amazing amount of, uh, of value just by going to Binance. Now, I know, I know this sounds like an actual commercial for Binance, but uh, I can't do anything with them. I mean, even on my exchange of wallet fees, uh, which I have, you know, my uh, Voyager and so all the different uh, exchanges and wallets I've ever used and all the different yield that, that you can gain. You can check it out. There's a link in the description. But if you look over here at Binance, simple swap, Binance, it's only Binance.us. So um, nothing has exchanged hands uh, with me and Binance. I've been to talk to them, but uh, I will just say this, that, uh, I mean, if I could, I would promote them a lot more heavy because of what they're doing. And it's just great value for everybody involved. So why not? So you got that, fixed savings, uh, which is you can lock things up seven days, four days, and three days and make even more. APY 5 to 15%. Locked staking, you can stake select stable coins, USDT, BUSD. Again, you can probably get some more if you uh, have with more of your BNB tokens. ETH 2.0 staking, DeFi staking, one of those is BNB. And what I like about this one is it, it tells you the risk level, high, medium, low. This one's high. There's a risk level, none for ETH 2.0 staking. What's the next one? Dual investment. Uh, that's where it's a two asset yield aggregator. So you put uh, two different tokens in, you get some kind of uh, yield off it, but the reward distributions are daily risk level, no principal protection. Liquid swaps, kind of like what we were talking about before. But then of course you have this thing, the BNB vault. Uh, and it's kind of like, it's, it's a reiteration of what they just talked about. Like, look, if you, if you have uh, the BNB token, you can use these programs like flexible savings, launch pool, DeFi staking, all these other things to get even more as opposed to if you don't have uh, many BNB tokens. So, so again, I mean, this is, this is like a no brainer and this is why the value is going up. So there's two things to make mention of. First of all, uh, we talked about this before. I'll just really quick go over it. Metcalf's law, the more connections that you have, the higher the value is, however you want to determine value, if you're talking about revenue or um, some type of um, uh, person who is like loyal to you or what, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. But uh, the more connections you have, the better off it is uh, because you have more connections, people using it, things like that. You can take a look at that as far as like uh, with uh, pay, not PayPal, <laughs> with um, Facebook, where, let me blow this up. It's kind of hard to see. So, 2004, 2009, not really much going on, but the more users that they had, the more revenue they were able to actually extract, mostly because of the uh, advertising and things like that. And then the next part here is, this was a uh, good one from Pat Ackerman, and he talks about uh, token supply, token utility and supply, and we took a look at tomato coin, which doesn't exist, uh, Binance coin, Voyager, and Celsius. And it's just the same thing. Uh, it seems like the more utility that you put in the more users that you have obviously the more the price increases so if you're looking at uh, which type of project you really get into take a look at any of these projects like like a celsius like a binance like a swiss borg like a voyager and see what's going on and real quick with, with voyager there is right now i made a price prediction on january 7th and i said that this is a voyager token was 29 cents and I said, I believe it would go to $30. And it kind of seemed ridiculous. And all of a sudden, it went over a dollar like in like four or five days. And all of a sudden, it was over $2. Now we're at like $240, $250. But it's actually decreased. It's actually come down. And the reason why it's come down is because they're having issues. They're having issues because they uh, have a waiting list right now. And they're trying to play catch up because of everything that happened with whatever you want to call it. With, with Wall Street bets and with Elon Musk and all the, the different people coming in, I'm hoping they're getting everything ready uh, because of the, the major crush that's about to come in, which I think is gonna happen pretty soon. So you don't see the price going up like uh, a Celsius, like a Binance coin, because they're in a holding pattern. Again, they can't onboard people fast enough, but I do think when this does happen, take a look at those projects. Um, again, not financial advice. These are just the things that I invest into. Just something that you could do your own research uh, to take a look at. And then the next part, Let me move back here. When we're talking about Binance or Binance coin, this was the, the new big thing. And it's really not that new. It's been out for about a couple, uh, about a week or so, uh, maybe 10 days. And what we're talking about now is Binance Pay. And this was, they are creating this to be a direct competitor with PayPal. And it's close. I mean, it's really close to what it could be, but it falls short on one thing. I'll tell you exactly what that is. So let me blow this up again. 
So this right here, what's Binance Pay? Binance Pay, contactless, borderless, and secure crypto payment technology designed by Binance. It allows you to pay and get paid in crypto from your friends and family worldwide. Here's the, here's the catch. You gotta have an account on Binance. So if you're like us in America, I keep whining about it, but <laughs> wah, <laughs> but we can't get it. So what are you gonna do? So uh, there's so this is how you all set it up. And this is why I say it's so close. So there's a couple of steps. The third one is you create your, your unique Binance Pay nickname. So I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So like I could put on there like, like Digital Asset News or D news, whatever. And then if I, I say, hey, pay me in uh, Bitcoin or Binance coin or whatever, where do you want me to send it to? Just send it to Digital Asset News uh, using your Binance app. Boom, done, right? There's no like super long uh, numbers. There's no like scanning, none of that stuff. And you can just, it's, it'd be super simple, but let's keep going. So the next step, uh, step five, Binance Pay Wallet, customize your preferred currency payment order. So what's cool here is that, let me blow this up even more. So you see right here, you've got, uh, BNB, BUSD, Bitcoin, SXP, ETH. So all these things, you can you can arrange those and how you want to get paid first, second, third, fourth, right? If someone doesn't have enough, it'll go to BUSD. If they don't have enough of that, Bitcoin, and so on and so forth. So I thought that's pretty neat. And then uh, top up your Binance Pay wallet, beta wallet. But again, to me, this looks like crypto.com when they talk about top up your wallet. But again, you have to uh, put crypto into this wallet and then you can send it wherever you want to, which isn't a big deal. But here's the catch, like again, how to set up your Binance QR code. Binance Pay QR code supports your transaction from one Binance Pay account to another. The Binance Pay wallet currently supports six different currencies and that's how you pay somebody. So it's not, it's, it's not like you're gonna get this uh, wallet and then it's gonna come to and just like, oh, just send it to Digital Asset News and then off it goes. You're gonna have to use the QR code or the, or the long, or, you know, it's, it's really the QR code. And not that that's a big deal, but, and. But not everybody is used to that type of thing. Like for here in America, it's not so much as scanning. I mean, we, we use it sometimes, especially now with, with COVID, we, we scan a lot of things for the menus and things like that. But usually if you're using like, like PayPal or Venmo or Zeal, uh, you're doing a lot of just like, you know, what's your, what's your name on, on the account? And then you just kind of send it that way. Or what's your email? And then it just kind of goes like that, or like something like PayPal. So it's just a little bit different. I mean, it's not a big thing. But I'm like, it would have gone a long way if they could have just used like, you know, a, a specific username and then send it off that way. Anyhow, so these things have come about and this is why uh, there is such a big, huge hit as far as or uptick with Binance coin. I think it's a it's a great thing. So that is it for that piece. Uh, if you want to sign up for Binance US, click the uh, exchange of wallet fees. Also, uh, you know, you have Voyager and Celsius and all the different uh, exchanges and wallets and brokers that I recommend, don't recommend because these are the ones that I use on a daily basis. And uh, you can check out all the yields that it has right here, all the um, fees and everything else. And of course, if you use the, uh, everything's an affiliate link, just so you know. So if you have no ambition to use that, then you can go right to the websites uh, or to Google Play or Apple Store and get them. But if you use the affiliate links, it's between 20, 10 and $25. So it's up to you. All right, so that's it for that piece. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's go on to our next snippet.